You may have heard lots of debate about the Electoral College and more specifically whether it is good or bad for our country. But what exactly is the Electoral College? The Electoral College is the system in which the United States presidents are elected. According to the Electoral College article, it is made up of 538 electors and each state is allotted a set number of electors equivalent to its two senators plus its number of Congressional House representatives. Each state's individual votes are counted and electors vote for the winner of the popular vote in each state. To win the presidential election, a candidate must receive at least 270 electoral votes. There's a lot of history behind the creation of the Electoral College. It was a compromise reached during the Constitutional Convention in 1787 because delegates could not agree on how the president should be elected. This system gave most of the power to the states. Due to the sudden rise in political parties, it became much more likely for there to be a tie in votes. This problem was addressed in 1804 when Congress passed the 12th Amendment, which established that each elector would cast a single vote for president and a second single vote for vice president. And if no candidate received a majority of the votes, the House of Representatives would choose from the top three candidates. Another phrase you may have heard frequently surrounding the election is the term swing states. These are the states in which the popular vote is determined by a narrow margin. Many times the difference between the popular votes for each candidate is by a margin of less than 1 or 2 percent. This also introduces us to the topic of safe states. Safe states almost always vote for the same party each election year. For example, California is a safe state because our state almost always wins the Democratic popular vote by a very large margin. There is lots of debate surrounding the Electoral College and whether it should be kept or abolished. In the same article on the Electoral College, it was stated that according to a March 2019 morning consult poll, 50% of voters surveyed indicated a preference for the national popular vote over the Electoral College, while 34% preferred the Electoral College. While there seems to be strengths as well as weaknesses in this voting system, it is safe to argue that a majority of American voters do not support the Electoral College. Overall, these are the basics of the Electoral College that you need to know about before we begin talking about the problems that surround the Electoral College. Supporters of the Electoral College say that its main goals are to provide a clear winner and to provide power to smaller states that would otherwise be overlooked throughout the election season. Without the Electoral College, small population states like Vermont, Montana, and Wyoming would be left unnoticed by candidates while all their attention would be towards large population states like California and Texas. According to Professor Judith Best, what the Electoral College does is structure the election and force candidates to form very broad coalitions. Policy Ed explains what would happen regarding recounting of votes if the Electoral College was abolished. A direct national vote would also mean that instead of recounts happening at the state level, each and every vote could be challenged and recounted equally. Imagine the chaos of national recounts with legal challenges all over the country, with each candidate suing in districts with judges friendly to their party. Ultimately, if we want to prevent partisanship and political polarization from becoming even worse than it already is, it's critical to preserve the electoral... Can you provide me a brief description about what you think about the Electoral College? Well, when I think about the Electoral College, um, it needs to be tweaked. Obviously, when it was created, from my understanding, um, it was created to uh, basically show full representation for the popular vote in all the states. So meaning like one particular state, uh, if they had X amount of a you know population, size of a population compared to another state that had a much larger number, there were imbalances in the voting process with that. But the way it is now, uh, as we've seen the last two elections, there's a lot of controversy with the Electoral College. Um, I think it needs to be tweaked I don't think they should get rid of it totally. And if they tweak it, they have to find a better way to, uh, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, make it more equitable in terms of how much the votes actually count uh, compared to each particular region of the country. So they have to find that, that, that key balance. And then this doesn't even get into gerrymandering and redistricting which is a whole nother issue. So that, that politicians use as well in counties to kind of rig the vote, so to speak. So that's my opinion of the Electoral College. What if I told you that in 2000 in Minnesota, there was a ratio of about 243,000 people per votes. Meanwhile, in Hawaii, the ratio was 92,000 voters per electoral vote, which means each Hawaiian who voted 
exercise 2.6 times as much of an influence on one electoral vote than a Minnesotan voter. What are your opinions on that? Again, um, these are the inequities I'm talking about. They need to somehow make it more equitable through the percentages to really show or create some kind of fair balance with each vote. And I mean, that's, it's, it's complicated, I understand, but that's the only way they can do it. Now, although the Electoral College was created to give smaller states a voice and created by some of the most brilliant minds our world may ever know, it has numerous flaws that are quite frankly too big to overlook any longer. The Electoral College has been outdated for quite some time now, and with all the change from then to now, it needs a vital change. An article from Carrie Fredericks, a very established and successful author who has written numerous pieces on severe issues like the one at hand, showcases a lot of very important flaws in the current Electoral College. Some notable points that are mentioned include the often overlooked fact that when the Electoral College was first created, the framers still viewed our country as independent states, which led them to create a system that would give all states, big or small, a voice. Now, you may ask, what's the problem with that? Well, I'll tell you the problem. The problem is very clear when looked at it plain and simple. Wyoming's one electoral vote represents 164, 592 residents, while our state, California, has one electoral vote per 627, 523 people. Still not convinced? A person standing on the Delaware side of the Delaware River has more than double the say a person standing on the New Jersey side. Regardless of bias, I believe that this is honestly extremely unfair if the point of the Electoral College was to give equal represent representation to both big and small states. In my opinion, looking at this from an unbiased view, I wholeheartedly believe that the Electoral College is majorly flawed. Now, another common rebuttal is, oh, we shouldn't mess with the Constitution. The framers knew what they were doing. All I have to say to that is, what about the times that we amended the Constitution? To be exact, the 15th Amendment, the 17th Amendment, the 19th Amendment, the 24th Amendment, and the 26th Amendment. Not to be that person, but if the Constitution was left the way it was originally, it would, by the godly framers, then we would still have people of color denied the right to vote, women denied the right to vote, 18-year-olds denied the right to vote, and the list goes on. If anything, amending this heavily flawed system that we have accepted as our violating system, as our voting system, would only help us in the long run. Some solutions to the Electoral College include only using popular vote or revising the Electoral College to fit today's standards and needs. We need to find a way to count everyone's votes while still giving small states power.